Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to try to do some more examples on how to find the largest common factor. And now we also figured out why they actually call it the greatest common factor, because later on we'll be trying to find the lowest common denominator. And you can notice that lowest and largest both start with the letter L. And since they like to use acronyms, shorten it, they want to use the word greatest so you don't confuse it with the word lowest. So greatest still means largest, but let's use greatest because it starts with a G, not with an L. We have three sets of numbers. We have two numbers here, two numbers here, and three numbers there. We need to find the greatest common factor of each of those sets. Starting with the numbers 52 and 72, the technique first is to see if the smallest number evenly fits into the largest number, which it doesn't. The next step then would be to take each of the numbers and write as a product of its prime factors. 52 can be divided by 2 since it's even, that gives us 26, which is divided by 2, which gives us 13. 13 is a prime number, so we are done. We can write the number 52 as the product of 2 times 2 times 13. We can do the same with 72. 72 can be divided by 2, which gives us 36, which can be divided by 2, which gives us 18. Still even, divided by 2, which gives us 9, which is now not an even number. 9 can be divided by 3 to give us 3, which means 72 can be written as the product of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, which means we've now written both 52 and 72 as the product of the prime numbers, the smallest prime numbers. Notice with 52, it has two twos and one thirteen in the sets of prime numbers when they're multiplied together. The number 72 has three twos and it has two threes, which means to find the lowest, or I should say, uh, see there, that's why we don't use largest, the greatest common factor. Here we have two twos, here we have three, we take the smallest number of them, so the greatest common factor, the GCF, or greatest common factor, is equal to 2 times 2. Now here we have two 3's, but there's no 3's over there, so we can't use any of the 3's. Here we have a 13, but we don't have a 13 over here, so we can't use any of the 13's, which means the greatest common factor in this case is simply 2 times 2, or 4. 4 fits into 52, and 4 fits into 72 evenly. Let's do a quick check. 52 divided by 4, well that's equal to 13, that's an integer number, and 72 divided by 4 is equal to 18. So you can see that since both of those are integer numbers, 4 fits evenly into 52 and 72, and it's the largest common factor. There's no other number larger than 4 that fits evenly into 52 or 72. You can try it, you won't find it. Let's try the number 75 and 45. Again, the smallest number does not fit evenly into the largest number, so 45 is not the greatest common factor. Then take the number 75. Well, it cannot be divided by 2, but it can be divided by 3, because when I add 7 plus 5 together, I get 12. I add the 1 and the 2 together, it gives me 3, which means 75 can be divided by 3, which gives me 25. Now, 25 can only be divided by 5, which gives me 5. That means 75 can be written as 3 times 5 times 5. So it's a product of its smallest prime numbers, of the smallest prime numbers. 45, we do the same thing. 45 can be divided by 3. 3 goes into 45 15 times. That can still be divided by 3. 3 goes into 15 5 times, which means 45 can be written as 3 times 3 times 5. To find the greatest common factor, notice there is one 3 here and there's two 3's there. We can take the smaller number of the two, which is only one of them, and multiply that times. Notice here we have two 5's and here we only have one. We can only take the smallest number of them, which is 5. 3 times 5 is 15, which is the greatest common factor. That is the largest number that can fit evenly into 75 and 45. 75 divided by 15 is equal to 5, and 45 divided by 15 is equal to 3. As a quick check, yes, we get integer numbers, 
That means we're good here. How about now that we have three numbers? We're trying to find the largest common factor or the greatest common factor of those three numbers. If the smallest number fits evenly into the biggest number and the second biggest number, in this case there's three numbers, then that would be the largest common factor. But that's not the case here. 16 does fit evenly into 48, but it does not fit it evenly into 24. So 16 is not the greatest common factor, which means we need to take each of the three numbers and write it as a product of the smallest prime numbers. 16 can be divided by 2 to get 8. Can be, that can be divided by 2 to give me 4. Divide that by 2, you get 2, which means that 16 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Try the number 48. 48 divided by 2 gives me 24. Divided by 2 gives me 12. Divided by 2 gives me 6. Divided by 2 gives me 3, which means that 48 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And finally, we take the number 24. Divided by 2 gives me 12. Divided by 2 gives me 4. Oh, oh, something is wrong here. That doesn't give me 4. It gives me 6. Divided by 2 gives me 3, which means that 24 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now to find the greatest common factor. You look for all the prime numbers. Here notice there's four of, of the number two, here there's four of the number two, and here there's three of the number two. Again, remember you have to take the smallest number of them, which means the greatest common factor is equal to two times two times two. Notice there is one three here, there's one three there, but there's no threes there, so you cannot grab any threes. You have to grab the lowest number of them. There's none in over here, which means that the greatest common factor is equal to two times two times two, which is equal to eight. Eight is the largest number that fits evenly into all three of the numbers. A quick check tells us that 16 divided by eight is equal to two. 48 divided by eight is equal to six and 24 divided by 8 is equal to 3. All of them are integer numbers, therefore we have a correct answer, and you can try, but you will not find a larger number than 8 that fits evenly into all three numbers. And that's how we find the greatest common factor. If you have two numbers, or three numbers, or any number of these numbers, that's the technique that we use. And that's the easiest way to do it.